Welcome today to the Douglas Family History YouTube channel. Again, my name is David Douglas, and we're going to be talking today uh, about Whittakin, King of Saxon, and his connection with the Douglas family. I'm doing, I believe, maybe close to two or three videos. I'm trying to shoot to try to do at least maybe three videos this evening. And I may not be changing shirts, so, you know, kind of overlook that. It's not that I wear this every day. This is one day that I'm trying uh, to do these videos. So I uh, hope that don't really throw you off. But, uh, but give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you. Make a comment, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. This will help us as far as, you know, to even, you know, possibly, you know, I don't know what to call it. Uh, certain rhythms, you know, it just helps as far as the, the viewings. So please help me out, you know, when it comes down to that. It'll be very much appreciated. You know, when you subscribe, you know, it don't cost you anything. You know, like I said, it just helps us. So again, we want to talk about Whittakin, and I know we have mentioned it, you know, in previous videos. Whittakin, who was the king of Saxons, and how he relates, you know, to the Douglas family. So, in, in some of my previous videos, you know, I talked about this man named Siegfried the Dane, the first Count of Gwens, and how that Siegfried was born 905 in Ringelheim, Germany. That's in the area of Lower Saxony. His father was Theodric of Ringelheim, who was the count there. He was Count of Ringelheim. And which he came from a line of counts. These were like rulers over certain providences. Siegfried's mother was Reginhild of Friesland, daughter of Godfried, Duke of Frisia. And as I said so many other videos, Godfrey was the son of Harold Clack half Danison, and he was one of the kings of Viking kings of Denmark. Theodric is also known as Dietrich, and he was born around 853 in Ringelheim, Germany. And I know I keep looking down. I have a lot written down. I cannot memorize all of this, so... Uh, I'm just having to do this to be able, you know, to get the information, you know, to you. So, Theodric was born 853 in Ringelheim, Germany, which is in Lower Saxony. And his father was Reginhard, Count of Ringelheim, and his mother was Mathilda von Sachsen. And I believe that's actually even talking about Saxony, Sachsen. Reginhard Count of Ringelheim was born 828 in Ringelheim, Germany, and his father was Walbert, Count of Ringelheim, and his mother was Aldberg. Walbert, Count of Ringelheim, was born 778 in Lower Saxony, Germany, and his parents was Whittakin, King of Saxony, and mother was Jeva, who was the sister of Sigurd, the first count and king of Hathabu, Denmark. So, I'm going to be calling in this video Whittakin, king of Saxons. Called, he was their leader, or the king of Saxony. He was their leader, the leader of the Saxon people of that day. And he was a strong opponent, might as well say even an arch enemy, of Emperor Charlemagne. And they were warring back and to. He rebelled against Charlemagne. And these wars took place between the years of 777 and 785. You know, in this Douglas family tree, there are some very colorful what I say, people, men, and, and women, I say colorful, they just had an outgoing personality, done some 
uh, I think, th really things that had went down in the history books. And Whittakin was one of those uh, colorful uh, ancestors that I have, and maybe some of you have, uh, in your family tree. So, uh, this Whittakin was also called the Saxon Wolf. Whittakin's name actually means child of the woods. Whittakin would rebel, like I said, when Charlemagne tried to convert them, the Saxons, and that they had a pagan religion. Charlemagne tried to convert them to Christianity. And in 777, and, and even Charlemagne started actually executing some of the Saxon people because they would not convert. So, Whittakin led a rebellion in the year 777, a revolt against Charlemagne and his Frankish kingdom. After the rebellion, Whittakin fled to Denmark. He stayed there for a while and was hid by Sigurd, the first king of Hathabu. His name was also, they called him actually Siegfried. This is probably where Siegfried the Dane got his name, I believe. There he met Sigurd's sister. Her name was Jiva. She became his wife. Whittakin would rebel again against Charlemagne a year later in 778. But yet this year, Whittakin and his army was defeated. And after this, like I said, Charlemagne prevailed and began to organize Saxony as a part of the Frankish kingdom. And again, like I said, he began to massacre thousands of Saxon nobles and order the Saxons to turn from their pagan gods to Christianity or be killed also. There is a legend that actually talks about Whittakin's conversion to Christianity. Listen close. It was said that he disguised himself and was spying on Charlemagne's troops that was in an encampment. And it was around Easter time that he did this. And the legend says that, and, and he confessed later and said that he saw in a vision a priest that ministering hold the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And I reckon this might even be talking about communion. Said in this vision, said the priest was holding a child during the consecration. While he was spying on this event, like I said, he later confessed to seeing this vision that led to his conversion to Christianity. Charlemagne, who was emperor, like I said, later he was crowned emperor of the of the whole Holy Roman Empire. But Charlemagne concluded that God had given Whittakin the privilege of witnessing the divine child Jesus behind the sacred host of the Mass. Whittakin would re renounce his pagan religion and he was baptized into the Christian faith. This baptism took place in the year 785 at a place called Antigone. And Charlemagne stood in as his godfather at the baptism. Whittakin is said to have had uh, some Christian churches even built after this. One of them was in a place called Inger. And he was the symbol for freedom and independence for his people. After his baptism, he was also called Saint Whittakin. I think he ended up even in a monastery for years, just staying there. He died in 807 in a place that he built, one of those churches at Inger, 
which is in Hefford, North Rhine, in a place called Westphalia, Germany. As I have seen records that stated Siegfried the Dane, and I have seen, I mean old books, that stated Siegfried, who was the son of Theodric, Count of Ringelheim, and even talking about him being the, the daughter, or not the daughter, but, but the brother of the empress, and I think her name also was Mathilda, and she had married Henry the Fowler, and Henry the Fowler even gave Brandenburg, otherwise under Siegfried's domain, and called him the first Margraf, I reckon like a count or, or, or leader or ruler of Brandenburg. And this Siegfried actually held, I believe, both titles, and some researchers say this, both titles as uh, the, the Count of Brandenburg and the Count of Gwens. So, but this, this record book and even other researchers have said, it goes back years, that this Siegfried, the Dane, who was the first Count of Gwens, was of the bloodline of Whittakin the Great. He was the descendant of Whittakin the Great who was the king of the Saxons. It's a very colorful character that I just got through talking about. So I will recap the family tree from Whittakin just by using the male bloodline uh, which I believe is in my Y-DNA and even other Douglas men of this certain uh, family tree, this Douglas family tree. Whittakin, I'm going to start with him. He was king of Saxon, Saxony, born 735, died 807. He had a son named Wichbert, Duke of Saxony, born 778, died 876. He had a son named Walbert, Count of Ringelheim, born 828, excuse me, born 800, died 856. Then he had a son named Reginhart, Count of Ringelheim, born 828 and died 891. Now I made a mistake earlier and I'm not going to go back and try to make this uh, video uh, again. because There's just so much. I had said that Walbert was the son of Whittakin, but I I was wrong. Just kind of back up. Like I said, I made a mistake and I apologize. Wichbert was the son of Whittakin, not Walbert, Count of Ringelheim. He was the grandson of Whittakin. So, Reginhart, Count of Ringelheim, born 828, died 891. Then his son was Theodric, also called Diedric, Count of Ringelheim, Born 853, died 916. And then his son in this family tree was Siegfried the Dane, the first Count of Gwens, born 905, died 965. He had a son named Ardulf de Gwens, the second Count of Gwens, born 930, died 996. Ro de Gwens was actually Ardulf de Gwens' son. He had a son, Ardulf had a son, named Raoul de Gwens, the third Count of Gwens, born 956, and he died actually in Paris, France, in 1036. Then I believe that, that he had a son, and in, in, in my records and in my uh, paper trail, I believe that Raoul de Gwens, his son was Archambault, the Viscount of Rouen, and if you hadn't heard me say earlier, Viscount actually means like a sheriff of ruin. He was like a, I reckon like the law of, of that day. Under, and he was under the counts and under the dukes of Normandy. And he was had that title, which I would say of, of nobility. He was down on that, that nobility line. He was, he was down, but yet he was a part of the ducal court of Normandy. So he was born 990 and he died somewhere between 10 uh, 30 and 1035 and he entered in also into a monastery and also his brother Franco 
entered into that same monastery there in, in, in the area of ruin. And I believe even Gilbert, uh, his son, also entered into that monastery. And I believe maybe in retirement or health reasons, I mean, there were some reasons that they entered into that monastery. And his son was Archambault Le Fleming, first one to take on the Le Fleming name after arriving in England after William the Conqueror uh, became king of England in the conquest. Archambault, like I said earlier, I believe he later he went on that same voyage with William the Conqueror's wife. that ship went there around the year uh, 1067 or the first part of the year 1068. And that is when he was setting out, according to that Normandy charter, setting out overseas. And that charter, I believe, was dated December of 1067. Archambald Le Fleming had a son named William Le Fleming, born 1074 and died 1150. He had a son, William Le Fleming did, and his son was named Sir Michael Le Fleming, born 1095 and died 1154. And he had a son named Theobald Le Fleming, born 1120, died 1193. Then he had a son named William who took on the name William D. Douglas or William of Douglas, William the first Lord of Douglas. It was the area around uh, Lanarkshire, Scotland, the area around the Douglas waters. So he took on that name, the first man that I believe that I, I found as far as in, in, in the record books and people that's researched that actually the first one recorded on a record with this name, the surname, William D. Douglas, and that's where our Douglas name comes from. So from, and William D. Douglas, he came, his descendants came actually to the area of Drumalang, Queens, Queensbury, Scotland, Queensbury, Drumland, Rig, Scotland. The Douglas clan that, that settled there is what my Y-DNA and even maybe even others uh, even has that same Y-DNA that goes to this Queensbury, Drumland, Rig, Scotland, Douglas clan. So I believe I have followed the correct paper trail that led me to Whittakine or Whittakin king of the saxons again please subscribe to our youtube channel go to our website which is actually entitled dark streams the douglas family story you'll see a picture there painted by this man that gave me uh, permission as far as to use it his name is on there i cannot remember it right now but i had uh, emailed him and he gave me permission to be able to use this picture and it shows uh, the one that I maybe had talked about earlier in one of the videos, James Douglas, the uh, Sir James Douglas, the good, they call him the Black Douglas. He's the one that was carrying the heart of Robert the Bruce to Jerusalem to bury it upon uh, Robert the Bruce, his deathbed, uh, request after he died they took his heart out and Sir James Douglas the good they said he was also called the Black Douglas uh, his his father William Douglas fought with William Wallace was one of his commanders and he ended up dying uh, in the Tower of London one of the kings placed him there and he ended up dying while Sir James Douglas as I recall uh, was in Paris at that time being taught in school. When he came back, he found out all that uh, about his father dying, lands being taken away. And it sort of, you know, uh, his blood began to boil and uh, he helped Robert the Bruce in, in all kind of battles and fights, you know, and wars uh, against England. But he was the one that was trying to take the heart of Robert the Bruce uh, to Jerusalem to bury it in the church of the Holy Sepulchre. 
because at that, that time, and even Robert de Bruce, you know, he had, uh, I reckon, so much, I reckon, condemnation, I reckon, weighing upon his heart uh, for killing, I believe, a man named John Conyon uh, that he had had a conflict with, and he killed him in that church at the altar. And I reckon he was just thinking, you know, that he could make, you know, penances, so to speak, repentance, uh, to repent by doing this, but James Douglas did not make it uh, to uh, to Jerusalem. He stopped off by a place in Spain, uh, an area not too far from Teba, Spain. There's a monument there that declares and talks about this. And he saw one of his friends uh, in a battle there, William Sinclair, William St. Clair, and he went, him and his men, into that battle with him to fight against what they were saying the Moors, I believe, was of also the Muslim faith. And as he was charging the enemy line, he took a chain that was about his neck that had a little metal box. It was like a little tiny casket that had the heart of Robert the Bruce in it. And he took that and... and kind of slung it like a sling, was slinging it like a sling, and he threw it into the enemy's lines and made this statement, onward, brave heart. He was calling Robert the Bruce, who is the, really, I reckon, the true brave heart. And Sir James Douglas said, onward, brave heart, Douglas will follow thee or die. Sir James Douglas died on that battlefield, and they tell me that when they removed his body from the battlefield that his body was laying on top of that little metal casket. And they took his body and that heart back to Scotland, and there they bury it. You can see in our family crest, and in a lot of uh, family crest, I reckon, you know, coat of arms, you'll see a heart on our coat of arms. That heart represents the heart of Robert the Bruce that Sir James Douglas was going to take uh, to Jerusalem and bury it for him, but never made it. And you'll see even a, a crown sometimes over that heart, which also represents as far as, you know, King Robert the Bruce. There's a lot of symbolism, and maybe one day I'll tell you about all the symbolism that is in our uh, coat of arms. So, until next time, like I said, keep listening, and we're going to try to have more videos on about as far as the Douglas uh, family history. I've also got several others on there, starting from the family, my family, which started uh, where I started at here in South Georgia. Then it goes to North Carolina, then Virginia, then the first immigrant that came over here. We go back to England, then Scotland, and then into Normandy. Uh, on over there as far as into Germany, Lower Saxony, even into Denmark. You know, this journey just takes us to a lot of places. So this is what makes up, as I reckon, our DNA or my DNA. And I've always been, as far as, you know, intrigued about family history, you know, just wanting to know, you know, where I came from. Uh, but one thing about it, I know where I'm going. I know I hadn't said this a lot, but I mean, I'm also a pastor uh, of a church. I've uh, been pastoring and ministering for uh, most of my life. And I've been a pastor, full-time pastor now for over 20-something years. So I see things in my family tree, you know, like some of the Vikings, you know, like King Harold Clack being baptized into the Christian faith. Whittakin, King of the Saxons, pagan ended up turning to Christianity. So these are some of the things that I kind of wanted to find out. Sure, there's good and bad in all, you know, probably of our family tree. Some of us don't have to, you know, uh, go too far back, you know, to see that. But yet, they're still our family. As the old saying goes, blood is thicker than water. Thank you for listening to us today. Like I said, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you very much.